wants to talk about sponges. Sponges are amazing. They can clean your body. They can clean your house. They can clean your soul. Okay, so they can't do that part. And most of all, they can become one of the most intensely marketable characters of the past 20 years with thousands of hit merchandise and toys and games and all sorts of things. I am, of course, talking about Harold Squarepants. No, I'm talking about SpongeBob. Are you fucking stupid? Ah, yes, SpongeBob SquarePants. Everyone's favorite little yellow sponge who has so much merchandise you could probably fill a whole country with it. Just one piece of merchandise is 2003's Battle for Bikini Bottom, a 3D platforming game so good that it's managed to amass a larger cult following than the People's Temple Movement. Battle for Bikini Bottom is a member of the dying genre known as the licensed kids game. These games were often cheap cash-ins designed to capitalize on the success of a show or a movie, and rarely are they very fondly remembered. I mean, we don't exactly have a very strong Monster House on the PS2 fandom. This cult following includes a massive speedrunning scene, which led to videos that honestly make me feel like I'm having a stroke every time I watch them. Additionally, a full-on HD remake was released in the year that shall not be named, and inspired a ton of hype around the game. Despite having the stigma of being a licensed kids game, Battle for Bikini Bottom continues to be remembered and played to this day, not only by people who were young when it was new, but also new players of today. Why is that, you may ask? It comes down to the fact that this is an incredibly solid 3D platformer that stands up to other examples of its genre from that time. This game is an enigma, a licensed kids game that is put up on a pedestal with other icons like Mario 64 or Banjo-Kazooie. This is Battle for Bikini Bottom. Upon booting up the game, we're greeted by... Are you ready, kids? Aye, aye, Captain! I can't hear you! Aye, aye. This interesting voice. That is not the SpongeBob theme song. What the hell? I guess it's a blessing considering YouTube's DMCA situation. The story of Battle for Bikini Bottom is like my father. Barely present. Plankton builds an army of robots to try and steal the Krabby Patty formula, but accidentally leaves the don't obey switch on and causes them to go rogue. Amateur. Meanwhile, Spongebob and Patrick wish for robots to play with, and believe that the robots infesting Bikini Bottom are in fact their fault. The two then set out to rid Bikini Bottom of the robot menace. This simple plot is just like a real episode of Spongebob. It exists to serve the comedy, and in this game's case, the gameplay. The game plays like your typical 3D platformer that was still popular around this time. You run and jump around full 3D recreations of your favorite locations from the show and collect golden spatulas, aka this game's version of Power Stars, in order to unlock new levels and progress further in the game. Makes perfect sense, right? It's like my pharmacist. I pay them by leaving golden cooking utensils by the side of the road. Don't you? The beauty of Battle from Kini Bottom is that it shares the same design philosophy as Super Mario 64. There are 100 golden spatulas in total, but you only need 75 to beat the game. Additionally, you can do the majority of spatulas in whatever order you like, increasing replayability. On top of that, there are also spatulas dedicated to collecting shiny objects, this game's version of coins, as well as Patrick's socks. The addition of these spatulas means you have more flexibility to your playthrough than in other 3D platforming games. Is there a certain level you really dislike? Skip it. Can't figure out a puzzle solution? Skip it. Stuck on the Mermelair rolling ball puzzle, which can BURN IN THE FLAMES OF HELL WHERE IT BELONGS! You... get the idea. It's this smart, open design that makes this game incredibly replayable and has led to it becoming beloved over time. Compare this to something like Revenge of the Flying Dutchman, the 3D Spongebob game just before this one. That game has zero replayability because, well, one, it's just generally terrible, and two, you have to collect 100% of the items to beat it. Battle for Bikini Bottom avoids that problem completely, and it's better off for it. Something unique about this game is that you don't just play as Spongebob. In fact, you have access to three playable characters. Spongebob is your basic all-rounder who can do most of the things you'll need in order to beat basic challenges. Patrick is able to pick up objects and throw them, which leads to various puzzles. Finally, Sandy is armed with a lasso, which she can use to yank enemies to their doom, or rotate like a helicopter in order to... fly. I... don't want to think about the logic of this. 
Not to mention how she lassos on the giant floating Texas symbols. I mean, that's how you do your daily commute, right? Then again, this is a game about talking sea creatures fighting robots, so I don't even know why I brought up logic. But exciting character abilities are nothing if they're not controlled well, and I'm happy to say that Battle for Bikini Bottom controls like a dream. A lot of 3D platformer games falter by having stiff controls, but Battle's controls are effortless. The game just moves smoothly, and you don't have to fight your controller, except when you're controlling the camera. Oh boy, the camera. The camera in this game is really dated and truly terrible. It's locked on an axis to the character you're playing as, and it's incredibly twitchy. Moving left and right is fine, but moving up and down makes it go flying like a kid on a sugar rush. It's super annoying having to finagle the right stick ever so slightly just to look up and down without having a seizure. Thankfully, the times when you have to do this are limited. As you progress through the game, SpongeBob will gain access to two new abilities, the Bubble Bowl and the Cruise Bubble. The Bubble Bowl enables puzzle solving and combat from a distance, and is the bane of GameSpot reviewers everywhere, while the Cruise Bubble allows you to fire off a bubble missile that can destroy things at range. Now wait a minute, it should look more like this. These abilities, while really cool, are limited in applicability beyond their respective puzzles. The Bubble Bowl is decent for combat, but not much else, and the Cruise Bubble is so slow that you can't really use it in combat at all. It's a shame, because the use of bubbles and imagination as new power-ups could have led to more possibilities. I'm surprised you don't get any abilities for the other characters or any new platforming abilities, too. The abilities get some use in the boss fights, which are, in my opinion, pretty weak. They're fun, but they get repetitive after multiple playthroughs. You just wait for them to do their attack patterns, attack when they're vulnerable, rinse and repeat until they're dead. The fights are the same every time, and it's honestly kind of boring. Oh well. Overall, the gameplay is solid. It's not going to rewrite the 3D platformer book, but it's a solid, fun system that leads to memorable and replayable levels. Graphically, the game is rather simple. It's colorful, but not trying to wow you. Geometry is basic and sometimes a bit janky looking. Character models are on point though. I'm playing the Xbox version for this review, which is typically said to be the best version of the original 3 graphically. It features better textures, an actual metal shader for the robots, and more bloom than a J.J. Abrams movie has lens flares for some reason. One gripe I have with this game is the lack of unique animations when the characters are speaking. They'll cycle between two or three pre-canned ones, but they often have nothing to do with the dialogue. It can be a bit jarring. The same cannot be said for the music. This game has a phenomenal soundtrack. From the bouncy joyfulness of Jellyfish Fields to the dark, foreboding atmosphere of Rock Bottom, every track suits its corresponding level super well. Some of them are total jams too, like the slide theme. My favorite has to be Flying Dutchman's Graveyard. Something about this guitar riff just gets me. So, Paddle for Bikini Bottom is a great game, right? Seems that's pretty well understood at this point. But this isn't the whole story. We have to talk about Rehydrated. Yes, Battle for Bikini Bottom got the remake treatment in the year that shall not be named. And I don't know how to feel about it. It is a very faithful remake in some areas, and not faithful at all in others. It's almost a full replacement for the original, but then issues and bugs crop up that make it more of a sideshow. Indeed, this isn't the version I chose to replay for this review, and that's for a lot of good reasons. The game was buggy on release, however that's been ironed out over time, thankfully. Even so, I still haven't received my achievement for getting 100% completion, and that's going to irk me for ages. It's certainly playable now, but in a lot of ways it just still doesn't feel right. Some aspects like the physics are just off compared to the original. Additionally, while the game is graphically beautiful, it's also at the expense of some of the original's art style. I mean, Spongebob just looks weird in this game. If it's your only option, I can still recommend it. It's still Battle for Bikini Bottom, after all. Just don't play the Switch version. It's buggy as hell, and I can't recommend it. Battle for Bikini Bottom is a fantastic 3D platformer that has earned its spot as a classic of the genre. By taking game design conventions from masterworks like Super Mario 64 and combining them with the Spongebob license, it managed to create something truly special and unique. There's a reason why this game is still played to this day, and there's a reason why it of all games was chosen to be remade. 
because it's just a really good game, especially for a licensed game. And for that, the developers at Heavy Iron should be commended. And where's my sponge? My soul needs cleansing.